Welcome back to Student to Stud. In this episode, we'll go over intertrochanteric hip fractures and everything you should know as a medical student. Here's the basic outline on what we'll discuss. Time for the first case. What do you see? We have three views, AP pelvis, AP right hip, and cross table lateral of a right hip, demonstrating a minimally displaced right intertrochanteric hip fracture. If you're having a hard time seeing this fracture, make sure you're using all the views that you're given. In this case, the fracture is best seen on the cross table lateral. How would you treat this fracture? We will shortly go over the different treatment options for IT fractures, but in this case it was treated with a short cephalomedullary nail. We will now discuss the typical presentation for someone who sustains an IT fracture. The same mechanism of injury that was seen with femoral neck fractures is also seen here with IT fractures. In the elderly population, the typical presentation will be a fall from standing. In the younger population, they will have a higher mechanism of injury, such as a motor vehicle accident. You must obtain a thorough history. It is important to define how much energy was associated to cause the fracture. You must assess the pre-fracture ambulatory status, the patient's social status, do they have help with family or friends, and what other comorbidities that they might have. On your physical exam, the patient will have pain with log roll, they'll be unable to perform a straight leg raise, and they'll have pain with heel strike. The patient's leg may be externally rotated and shortened. You want to make sure you do a thorough secondary exam as these patients can have other injuries such as other fractures, intracranial hemorrhages, rib fractures, pulmonary contusions, and intra-abdominal injuries. The mortality rate in the first year is between 20 to 30%. These fractures actually have a higher mortality rate than femoral neck fractures. Several factors have been linked with higher mortality rates, such as being a male, a delay in surgery greater than 48 hours, and patients that have more comorbidities. We will now turn our attention to the pertinent anatomy you should know. IT hip fractures are extracapsular. Why does being extracapsular matter? It all comes down to blood supply. These fractures have a richer blood supply, which allows for good healing potential. IT hip fractures are defined as the region between the greater troch and the lesser troch. There are several deforming forces that you should be aware of. The proximal deforming forces are the abductors, the external rotators, and the iliopsoas. The abductors, the gluteus medius, minimus, and tensor fascia lata, cause abduction. The gluteus maximus, piriformis, superior gemelli, inferior gemelli and obturator internus and quadratus femoris causes external rotation. The iliopsoas is the main contributor to flexion as it inserts on the lesser troch. The distal deforming forces are the adductors, the quadriceps, and the hamstrings. The adductors, adductor longus, magnus, brevis, and gracilis and pectineus all causes the distal fragment to be adducted the distal fragment is also shortened by the hamstrings and quadriceps. The combination of these forces lead to an overall deformity of external rotation, varus alignment with shortening. The major blood supply is the lateral epiphyseal artery of the medial femoral circumflex. Just to review again, the calcar is located on the posterior medial aspect and contains a dense plate of bone. The calcar provides support to the femoral neck as it is a transitional area to transfer stress from the trabecular bone of the femoral head and neck to the cortical bone of the femoral shaft. The calcar resists compressive loads and prevents overall varus deformity. When you suspect a hip fracture, you should obtain an AP pelvis, AP hip, cross table lateral of a hip, full length femur. In addition, you can obtain a traction with internal rotation x-ray but this is definitely optional as this can cause a significant amount of pain for the patient. If you decide to do this, you'll need to internally rotate the leg approximately 15 degrees while providing traction. You can also obtain a CT scan. If your imaging such as an x-ray and CT are negative, as the sensitivity of a CT scan is about 69% and the patient still has pain and you're suspecting an occult fracture, you can order an MRI which has a sensitivity of 99%. Some physicians will obtain bilateral lower extremity ultrasounds to rule out a DVT if there's a delay more than two days between fracture and fixation. The next slide is high yield as you'll most certainly be asked what four characteristics make an IT fracture unstable. The characteristics that make an IT fracture unstable are comminution of the posterior medial calcar, lateral wall blowout, and some will argue an involved greater troch, subtrochanteric extension, and reverse obliquity.
An unstable IT fracture at least has one of these characteristics. We will now discuss the different treatment options for IT fractures. These can be divided into non-surgical and surgical. Non-surgical treatment is extremely rare as fixation of the fracture is palliative for pain control and hygiene, as the fixation can improve transfers for caregivers and patients who are unable to ambulate. The young patient who sustains an IT fracture will be briefly discussed. The goal of surgical fixation in this population is to have anatomical alignment to prevent excessive shortening as this can have major long-term complications. Younger patients do not tolerate limb shortening as well as older patients. There are several surgical constructs that can be used such as a blade plate, a DHS, cephalomedullary nail, and a proximal femoral locking plate. The next two surgical treatments will be the most common treatments you see while on rotations. We'll first discuss the sliding hip screw, also known as the DHS or dynamic hip screw. This device allows for dynamic sliding of the femoral head. Dynamic hip screws are indicated in stable IT fractures. A landmark study was performed in 1995 by Dr. Bamgartner in which he studied 198 IT fractures treated with a DHS. In his study, 18 had screw cut out. Of the fractures that had screw cut out, the average tip to apex distance was 38 millimeters compared to 24 millimeters for patients that did not have screw cut out. The major take home point that you should know from this study is that the tip to apex goal should be less than 25 millimeters. To calculate the tip to apex distance, you will need an AP and lateral radiograph. The tip to apex distance is the sum of the distance from the tip of the screw to the apex of the femoral head on AP and lateral. When placing the screw into the femoral head, it should be located on the inferior aspect of the femoral neck on AP radiograph and appear centered or slightly posterior in the femoral head on lateral. Why do you think the screw should be positioned in this location? This position is where the calcar is thickest and where the bone quality is best. Do you know where the bone quality is worse and what kind of screw cutout you would get? The anterior superior quadrant has the worst bone quality and this is where you would have an increased risk of superior cutout. You want to insert the screw centrally to within one centimeter of the subchondral bone. While on rotations, you may be asked whether a four hole side plate is better than a two hole side plate. Studies have demonstrated that there is no difference between a two hole or a four hole side plate. I know that was a lot of information. Feel free to pause and rewind to make sure you understand all those concepts we just talked about. Sliding hip screws can only be used in stable IT fractures. An advantage to this type of fixation is that you don't violate the abductors. The implant is less expensive than a cephalomedullary nail. A disadvantage is that it's open and can cause greater blood loss. We will now discuss intramedullary hip screws, also known as cephalomedullary nails. When you have a stable IT fracture, you need to use a short cephalomedullary nail. When you have an unstable IT fracture, you have to use a long cephalomedullary nail. This is performed percutaneously. The ideal starting position on AP radiograph will be just medial to the tip of the greater troke as the implant has a 5 degree proximal bend. On lateral radiograph, you want the guide wire in line with the femoral canal. When you insert the guide wire, you don't want to pass further than the lesser troke. An extremely high yield article that you should read was written by Dr. Hadukovic entitled Intertrochanteric Fractures, 10 Tips to Improve Results. This is an excellent article that discusses tips and tricks when treating IT fractures and the various pitfalls to avoid to increase your chances of having a successful outcome. Cephalomedullary nails can be divided into short and long nails. Short nails are indicated for stable patterns. Long nails are indicated for unstable fractures or fractures that are borderline unstable. Some advantages are that it can be faster. You can have less blood loss as it is performed percutaneously. A disadvantage are that this device is more expensive and you violate the abductors which can lead to a Trendelenburg gait and impact your surgical approach if the patient needs a total hip replacement in the future. There are several complications that can occur when treating IT fractures. Loss of fixation or failure of your implant. You can have implant cutout like we discussed earlier. The tip to apex distance less than 25 millimeters can help minimize the risk of screw cutout. Screw cutout will usually occur within the first three months from the time of surgery. You can have non-union as well. Varus deformity can occur in 20% of unstable fractures. As a medical student, I struggled identifying whether the femur was in varus or valgus. 
The two landmarks that you want to use when trying to determine whether you are in varus or valgus are the proximal aspect of the greater troch and the center of the femoral head. If the femoral neck is neutral, the greater troch should align with the center of the femoral head. If the femur is in varus, the greater troch will be above the center of the femoral head. If the femur is in valgus, the greater troch will be lower than the femoral head. You can remember this by valgus and lower. The other complication that can occur is perforation of the distal anterior femur. This occurs if you have a starting point that is too posterior. In addition, if you have a mismatch of the radius of curvature between the femoral nail and the femoral shaft. We will now go over some practice cases. Case two, can you read this x-ray? We have two views, AP and cross table lateral of a right hip and a skeletally mature individual demonstrating a right intertrochanteric hip fracture with subtroch extension. How would you fix this fracture? This fracture at least has one characteristic that makes it unstable. Therefore, it was treated with a long cephalomedullary nail. Case 3. Can you read this x-ray? We have two views, AP and cross table lateral of a right hip and a skeletally mature individual demonstrating a right intertrochanteric hip fracture. In this case, a traction view was performed as it can be tough from the injury films to determine whether this fracture is stable or unstable. Looking at the traction view, this fracture appears to be stable. How would you fix this fracture? Since this fracture is stable, it was treated with a short cephalomedullary nail. Case 4. How would you read this x-ray? We have two views, AP right hip, AP cross table lateral over right hip, and a skeletally mature individual demonstrating a IT fracture with subtroch extension. There's also a butterfly fragment on the posterior medial aspect. How would you treat this fracture? This fracture is unstable, therefore it was treated with a long cephalomedullary nail and a circlage cable. Let's finish off our discussion with some PIMP questions. Question 1. What are the four characteristics that makes an IT fracture unstable? Posterior medial comminution, lateral wall blowout, reverse obliquity, and subtroch extension. Question 2. What year was Dr. Baumgartner's original study on the tip to apex distance? 1995. Question 3. A posterior or anterior starting point would lead to the possibility of perforation of the distal anterior cortex. Posterior. Question 4. What is the normal femoral neck shaft angle? 130 degrees. Question 5. What is the advantage of using a four-hole side plate when compared to a two-hole side plate? There is no advantage. Question 6. Why will a reverse obliquity IT fracture have a high rate of failing if a DHS is used? The fracture is nearly parallel to the sliding hip screw, which will lead to loss of reduction and collapse. Here's a picture to demonstrate why a fracture will fail. Question 7. Are IT fractures intracapsular or extracapsular, and what is the significance? IT fractures are extracapsular, which lead to a better healing potential. Question 8. If the center of the femoral head is higher than the superior aspect of the greater troch, then the femur is in varus or valgus. Valgus. Question 9. If the center of the femoral head is lower than the superior aspect of the greater troch, then the femur is in varus or valgus. Varus. Question 10. Delaying surgery more than how many hours may increase 30-day mortality? 48 hours. Question 11. The femoral shaft has an anterior or posterior bell. Anterior. Question 12. If ORIF has failed by either screw cutout or varus collapse with poor quality bone, treatment should be arthroplasty. Question 13. What classification predicts mortality in patients who sustain an IT fracture? The American Surgical Association classification. This classification is used by anesthesia. Question 14. Name the three ligaments that reinforce the capsule of the proximal femur. The iliofemoral, the pubofemoral, and the ischiofemoral. Question 15. Why must you image the entire femur with an IT fracture? Prior surgeries, potential for malignancy, or if there's a fracture distal. And that's all for intertrochanteric hip fractures. Until next time, thank you for listening and hopefully that was helpful. Be sure to give us a thumbs up or leave us a comment so we can better serve you.